Hello, I'm Papa Biceps. You're watching the Torin YouTube channel. And remember, don't f*** with Papito. Right, I'm here for another episode of Talk to Thorin, and my guest for this one is going to be Hampus, who is the in-game leader of Bleed Esports, but most famously, you will know him from Ninjas in Pajamas, of course, where he played for a number of years, and indeed didn't play at a certain point in time, as <laughs> we'll find out later in this interview. So Hampus, the actual place I want to start in your case goes like this. You actually come from, I think, one of the strangest backgrounds of any <laughs> Swedish pro I'm aware of, because almost every yeah. single Swedish pro was in one of these teams. It was like NIP, or uh, the original one yeah. or Fnatic or then maybe they came through like the Epsilon team like people like Freddie B and Draken and then uh, this yeah. how, these are the teams that people kept through you just came through like the outskirts you took like the weirdest route ever you had to just play anywhere and with anyone and and even with the Swedish players you played a lot of them were the way less famous ones and the ones a lot of them didn't make it to this level so what, what was it what's your background in CS like were you just not in the right cliques or something did you hit, miss the wrong time in fact another thing people might not know is you spent many years at sort of the team Two level. You didn't just yeah. go there and jump straight up. So you kind of you kind of kept getting left behind when people went up. Right, you were the ones that would be staying in the team while the Nox and the Dennis and all, whoever yeah. the world went up to the bigger squads. Right. So what was your route to the top? Um, I, I would say like what happened for me was that I didn't try to become a professional player. You know, like I was just playing the game with my friends. You know, having fun. You know, going to school, things like this. You know, just you know playing very casually. And then, you know, like, there is this, you know, open qualifiers for this, open qualifiers for that, you know, like, we played this, uh, we played some Swedish qualifiers, and, you know, we got into, like, this FPLC, you know, just me and my friends. And then, in, while in FPLC, you meet other Swedish people, like, a bit better, I guess you could say, but still, like, not professional players, right? Uh, and then we just made the mixed team, we played some open qualifiers, and then we qualified for the first thing was the, the ECS, ECS De Development League, or whatever oh, it's right. called, you know? Oh, right, right. And we were just five random Swedish guys. No one have ever heard about us. And I, I, we took a map against Heroic. We won a map against Gambit. And we also won a map against Godsend, who was like Cream's flush IAW at the time. And we were just five random Swedish players, you know? Okay. So, and from that it started. We qualified to this ECS thing. Uh, and then we got signed by Epsilon as their academy team. Uh, and from there it just went. I was like, hmm, I, I'm getting five hundred dollars per month for playing a playing a video game, like, and I'm going to school. Like, maybe maybe this can be something, you know. And then from there I I started, you know, trying a little bit more, like, actually trying to like understand the game more. Like before I just I just joined the server and played, right? But from that point I you know I I, I tried to learn, like, like I, I watched demos, like I looked at the pros, I looked at all the this team, like you know I tried to understand the meta and all these things, you know, and then. From there, it just took off. By the way, I actually did see that way back at the beginning of your career, one weird person that you had a connection with. This will be to CS fans. This will be random, but I just was interested. You actually played with that guy Safe, who now is like a top valor yeah. pro. People don't. Yeah. He's, like, he's like actually had a lot of success. Like, was he also like an up and coming player? Who was this guy back then? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like uh, we we played in these random sw Swedish mixed teams, like just me and the friends, and then like one of my friends knew Safe. Uh, and then, like, he was like, he's really, really good, he's really talented. He was like 14 at the time or something. And we we're like, okay, let's play some games with him. And then we, we brought him into our mixed team or whatever to play the qualifiers. And then I don't exactly remember what happened, but we played with him. And then I think it got out, like, we got the information that he was back banned. He was, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's unbanned now because with this big... It was the same thing with like, the Ampy one as far as I know, right? Yeah. It's like they, they got it overturned eventually, but at the time yeah. they all quit to Valorant. Yeah, exactly. So. And, and I think that's a very sad thing because like, yeah. he either, I have no idea why he got banned, but like he got banned when he was like 11 years old, right? Right. And, and like he, he was like he if he didn't was not back banned, like he would be a Taiwan player today. Oh, so right. Like, okay. like 100%. Like he was so, so skilled. Like also like he played in some like singularity teams or whatever, like the Swedish lineups they had for a while and like he was farming in my opinion. Like he tier three, tier two, and he was like kinda of farming, you know? And he just like he didn't get offers because of the Vakban and then Valorant came and yeah, we see he's one of the best in Valorant now and also Leo, if you know him from Valorant. Yeah, of course. He's another top yeah, he's in Fnatic if people don't know, yeah. Yeah, same same with him, like Right. Like, uh, he was also vac so he... Oh, he, mate, you know what's right. killing me about this? Like, the joke is, when everyone says, like, where are all the Swedish players? Like, all yeah. the like, well, they're in Valorant, apparently, mate. Like, yeah. like the top like, was, in Valorant. <laughs> yeah, it was so sad. Like, a few years ago, I was like, I saw this guy, Leo, like, he was, his name, nickname was Sis in Counter-Strike. Okay. And, like, I told all my friends, like, this is the new Brolan. Oh, like, this guy right. is so good. He will be so good. And, like, I can't, like, I'll probably play with him soon, you know, like... And then, oh, he has a vac Oh, Valorant came. Oh, let's go Valorant. 
and now he won everything in Valorant, I think, as well. So, okay, after that, obviously, I think the first team, at least where I was aware of you, was when you were in the Red Reserve team. And by yeah. the way, that's because, like, obviously, some of those other players are people that have been you know, around the outskirts of the scene, in the qualifiers and stuff. Like, was this team significant to you? I mean, I remember this was the squad where, look, it is one of the ones where, like I say, when you met good teammates, they then sort of moved on and you kept getting stuck rebuilding. But yeah. What was this period like? Uh, for Red Reserve, I think it was a very nice period. Like I was very happy during this time. Like I felt like you know we we went to some other countries to play some land tournaments. Like I really felt like maybe I can actually do this, you know, for real, for real. Like you know, my, I always had my parents, you know, don't play games, go outside. But now sure. I can tell them, you know, I'm making money. I'm traveling to other countries to play this game and, and things like that. And that lineup, yeah, like I, I think it could have been so much better than it was because the org. We had back then, like the guy, I don't remember his name even. I think he's probably in jail now or something. He, he had a lot of... Or is <laughs> it, like, okay. he, like he's either in jail or he's in Thailand, I think. Oh, uh, right. Okay. So he did some shady uh, shit, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. And like, we had our lineup and we, we were doing very good online. Uh, and then we got signed to Red Reserve. And then like one or two weeks after, they kicked one of our players and brought Michael Lele. Oh, and like right. they, they, they removed our, our like just for the like, big name I'm guessing right yes yes like only for the big name right. like Michael like Michael saw this lineup come out and then I think he wrote to to the oh, organ right. like I wanna pl- I wanna join right. so, something like this because <laughs> and he, he was a very big name back then compared to us right so the org was like okay this guy has worse stats fuck him let's get Michael Lele and the guy they removed a side dish and he was our like. Like, he was not the IGL with me, but he was helping me a lot, you know. Like, we okay. played this face it since we were level 8 together. Like, we played so much together, so we know each other, like, super good in-game and all this. <clears throat> and he was, like, kind of a supportive guy, second caller, and then... Yeah, the org removed him and brought in another upper, so we had two main uppers instead of a supportive player, so it got... It wasn't perfect, right? And we were so close, you know, to qualifying to the minors and all these things, but... It didn't happen, so... And then uh, me and Michael Lele had a big argument, and I was like... Yeah, I can't play with you. I benched myself. <laughs> and then after that, I don't remember what happened exactly. Well, one thing I would ask is this, because actually this also will lead into some of the NIP stuff. If people don't know, this is where DGL comes from. He was yeah. the coach of this team. I mean, yeah, what yeah. people might not know is he has a weird background, because isn't he like partially like Balkan, but then also yeah, like yeah. He, he's Swedish uh, as well? So he kind of yeah. has like a dual, he can like go in either scene. But if people yeah. don't know, obviously it was years later, he became an IP coach. Was he? Was your connection in NIP some of the reason he got hired in any way? Was there any sort of yeah, connection Yeah, I, I think it was the only way, the only reason he got hired right. in NIP. I think because with NIP, like, now we're skipping a bit, but with NIP, like uh, with Jonas especially, like he didn't listen to me at all. Like if oh, I right. said, let's get that player, then he went the other way, you know? <laughs> so, we, so with DGL, it was like we knew Tret was going to leave or not, not uh, be coach anymore. And then uh, it was during this uh, I Am Fall event, I think, or I Am Winter, uh, one of these. It was the one that was the fall. RMR, yeah. His yeah, fall. yeah. Yeah, but we're one of them because both were in the same hotel oh, like, same okay. in, in, in the autumn. So I don't know exactly which one. Right. But it was like we knew Tret is out and me and Device are very close in the team. Uh, and then I was like, I used to tell Device like, bro, DGL, he's the guy, you know? Is the implication that if you tell Device, a great Danish player, then Jonas, Danish yes. like CEO of NIP, he goes, yeah. wait a minute, Device says that. Maybe I should get... Is that really yeah. what you're implying? Is that the way you had to do it? Like, manip- yeah, pull the I, strings? I had, to, I had to convince Device <laughs> right. so he could convince Jonas, because sure. I couldn't. If I said the DGL's name to Jonas, DGL would never be in an right. I So I, I had to, you know? So I, I had to take that way. I had to think smart about it. I like and that. I really wanted DGL because I think DGL is one of the best guys we, we have in Sweden. I will say from talking, I once when he was in contact with Snappy, I actually yeah. did um, a podcast when we were doing Flashpoint. We used to do like, a weekly podcast and we'd have guests on. I will say, he seemed like he had an interesting mind for the game. He definitely yeah. had a good, good overview of like how teams play and stuff, right? Yeah, he's, he's very good. Like he's, I don't know what happened now in the international lineup in NIP with him, but like you can see, like the moment he joined when we had the Swedish lineup, we we like our level, like it, it jumped up a lot, in my opinion. Sure. And I think that was mostly thanks to him. Right. One of the things I don't want to ask is. You eventually did end up in the team where this is actually the one that always makes me think like, for some reason, you just keep getting left behind all the time. <laughs> that's the joke is that's why you should be an yeah. IGL. That's why I was up to IGLs at the low level. Because mate, yeah. the lineup you had when it was God sent. I'm going to read this off to people now because at the yeah. time, no one cared. But if you listen yeah. to the names now, you're going to be like, bro, if you could make that team today, that would be like a top 10 team. Like, yes. The lineup was Twist, who people remember was good. That was the fucking guy who could like hybrid up as well. <laughs> he was Dis- the carry of that team. Dis- 
Scott Doplin, who was still a talent at the time, good rifler. You had Freddie B, another guy from the Epsilon days, and then you, and then Brolan, and then by the way, the coach was actually like Lopez's brother, the legendary Finnish player Narsu. Like this lineup's pretty good, actually, man. This is a pretty solid yeah. squad. Yeah, but the crazy thing about that is. Like we didn't have a coach. Like we had a coach, of course, but he, he just went with us to events and talked to his on the phone to his girlfriend. Like he didn't even understand oh, the right. language he spoke. Like he, he didn't do anything in that lineup. Okay. <clears throat> like nothing. He he was just a paycheck stealer there. I, and I remember I was so frustrated. Like I wrote to our boss, like he's not doing anything. Like I need help from the coach. Like I can't do anything or everything, right? Like I'm a new IGL as well. Like I was the newest one in that team. I came from nothing and I was like, I, I need some help. Like I can't do all the work myself, you know? And then I just got flamed by the boss. Yeah, uh, just focus on what you can control or whatever you know. But what you, what would you say about the team in general? Was it actually a good project? Was it a good team? Yeah, it was. It was. It was very good. Like we were close to, uh, we were so close to qualifying for the major. You were mixing uh, up at the Dream Axe. You were in like yeah. deep finishing stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and the uh, the London minor. Like this this story, I think you will maybe laugh about because I, I say this, this, this. There is this one round the London minor that delayed my career with 10 oh, months on. or one and a half year, one and a half year so it's like this so we're playing NIP in a best of one on overpass and we're we're CT and we're farming them like they have no chance we, we're fully farming them like fully dominating the game and then Brolan and Twist is in a 2v1 against Dennis and Dennis is stuck on default on B site overpass and he has not planted a bomb yet and both Twist uh, Twist is uh, heaven with up uh, Brolan is lower with M4 and both of them has Molotovs, and he's stuck behind the default box. So I'm used to saying in TeamSpeak, like, guys, uh, Molo him. Molo him. No one Molotovs him. Brolan does some online peak, like he was young back then. He dies. Twist lose the round. We lose the game 16-14. <laughs> and, the, and, then the, and then we fucked up the next game because we were, every, the mood just got destroyed so... after that game. It was like NIP, like we're gonna, we were so hyped Gosh, to win against yeah. them, and then, we, and then we lost like that. And then, like, we had one more event after, and then both of them left for Static, and oh, I had to start right. over again. And I was like, fuck, if you use Molotov, we would have played the Major, and I would maybe be a Taiwan player, but now I had to start over again. <laughs> right. So it, it was very frustrating, I remember. And I have told both of them this many times. Classic. Especially because if people listen, like, just, if you listen to the positions he was describing, they basically had him pinned in. There's not, you didn't yeah. have to take a fight even. That's even worse. Because I always yeah. do say, like, Lopez had a great line for this. The worst rounds that people lose in Couch Strike are the ones where if you just took your hand off the keyboard and didn't do yes. anything, you would win. It's like if yeah. you then do the move that fucks it up, like, that'll haunt you forever. I agree. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. Now, obviously, the team after this is actually probably where people more got to know your name was in um, Gamer Legion, obviously, yeah. when they made this interesting lineup initially, where it was like, bizarrely, at the time, you have to remember, there wasn't that many international teams but they made this weird lineup where it was like you and Nox so there's two Swedes then yeah. there's fucking two Belgians because there's existence and scream which already sounds like what is this lineup like what year <laughs> even is this and then there was like the fucking HS guy from Estonia yeah. which is like what a weird lineup but the mad thing about it is Hampus this lineup was actually good because famously the story goes even though people were telling me it was Corpium because I'm like an existence fan when that Furia team broke out and beat Astralis and everyone was like holy fuck they're for real. you guys are, look it was a small Portuguese land but right after that you guys just beat them straight up yeah. right what was this yeah, team? Yeah. How did you get in this project? Like an international team? Uh, it was like after after the Godsend times, like Godsend bought us or Red Reserve bought us from Godsend. Yes. So I was in the Red Reserve second time. And then uh, we made they made some changes in Red Reserve and I don't know exactly what happened. Borland and Twist uh, joined Snatic and we tried different players, whatever, whatever. Uh, and then it got to this point where like we the team was fully dead. Like we knew it was dead. So we knew something new was going to happen. And then uh, Krille, like the coach of the team, and the manager Bonafide, they wanted to make a new lineup with the Drake and in the beginning it was Drake and Scream and Existence. And they obviously wanted me, but in the beginning I was like I was not too too hype about it. I remember. And then they finally convinced me and then which so it was supposed to be me, Drake and Scream, HS and the Existence. And then uh, NIP came and stole Draken because they wanted him for some standing things and then he just played two events with them and then we, yeah we got Nox Draken got kind of fucked there by NIP a little bit because I I don't know I don't remember exactly what was said but something that was said didn't happen and it's just like this for right. Draken so it was right. it was I don't know exactly what happened but yeah it was he, he got fucked over there uh, which I think is sad because I don't know. I think he still has. He was a talented player, uh, yeah. Yeah, at, at that point, like he he had, you know, this. He he could be 
he could still you know come up again and be a Taiwan player at that point. So I think that was I think that was kind of what was killed his career a little bit as well. Uh, and then yeah, we got Nok instead, and I knew Nok from before. Um, and this team was very nice. Like it was very good in my opinion as well. Like we had like the roles were perfect. Like everything was good. Like everyone was happy. Like the personalities, everything worked. And then. I don't remember exactly why or when, but like we had some small, you know, arguments in the team. Uh, I remember existence and existence as and HS. They were not on the same page, and they, I don't know. It was like one of them had to go, and then I was on existence side, but I think I was the only one, and then sadly existence had to go. What was it actually uh, like to play with him? I know this is like a long time after his glory yeah. days and very games. What was it like to play with him? Yeah, it was very nice. Like me, who has been an IGL before, and then not not being an IGL and playing with him, like I learned so so much. Like I would not be where I am today, or like I would not even be close how good I was when I played an NIP. Like if it weren't for existence, like that time really made me, like really improved me as a player. Right. What I want to know is this, which is how do you go from the Gamer Legion squad to NIP? Because as far as I remember, like NIP did that thing where they had that weird transition where they had like, if you remember, they got Plopsky in that, but then it's like they yeah. slowly transitioned out of like the Get Right Forest era. And then eventually suddenly they had all the youngsters in there. You were there as well. So like, did you all come as a group? Like, was it you, were you selected by NIP um, separately? How did that happen? I think they, no, they got Plopsky first. Uh, they got Plopsky actually during the event when we were in Portugal and beat Fury. Oh, right. Okay. Because the team Plopsky was in was Ancient or the, yes. something like that. They were called. Like and that, I yeah. remember, so they played Dreamhack Summer the same time we were in Portugal. And I remember they wrote to me about joining their team because Plopsky is joining NIP. Uh, so they got Plopsky. And then a few months later, they got Nock, uh, which in my opinion was a weird pickup by NIP. Like they should have gotten me then because it was like, if I'm not ideal, I'm a lurking kind of player, right? And they bought the main hopper from my team and puts him in my positions, like lurking nice. positions. I was like, bro, like the one doing the scouting here, he he should he should think about what he's doing, you know. And then uh, and then I think it maybe was one month, two months, and then uh, NIP won against Astralis when Astralis still were good. And then the day after, my agent was like, NIP wants a meeting. I'm like, what? Why? And then we had the meeting, and then they told me they were interested. And then like two weeks later, they signed me. And I think I, I think also uh, I, I have heard like the reason I didn't join an IP sooner uh, was because I don't want to say any names, but the the coach who signed Nock didn't like me at all for whatever reason. He had heard something from one of the players I have played with, and I also played with him in an IP and before an IP. Uh, he 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 basically said a lot of shit about me to this coach, like implying and, um, you're toxic or something, or a bad teammate or something. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I don't know exactly what he okay. said, but like he, he said a lot of bad things about me apparently. And the coach at the time didn't care about finding out himself. I guess he just trusted this guy and didn't want me. And then this coach got removed. They got a new coach, Threat, and then I I got signed. I, I want to actually ask about some of these specific players. So since we, since obviously he was there and then he left, he had like a cup of coffee and nip. Nork's a player I definitely want to ask about because I have to say, mate, I remember watching him as like a talent before he came in NIP. Then when yeah. he was in NIP, it's interesting what you said about the roles there because he always looked a bit subdued. And in fact, sometimes he didn't even up. That was one of the craziest things. Yeah. And then afterwards, he looks like twice as good in fucking Apex. So like that suggests to me almost, like unless he was just bizarrely was having bad form, maybe the NIP system didn't fit this guy or they didn't use him right or something what, what happened um i wouldn't say it was the system like i, I would say like because i play with knock like uh, f from his like second team like i brought him up like to play with us in passions at some point um and like he was very talented but sure. he's he, he's like a bit of a special guy you know and like we play when i play with him in game legion as well like he used to tilt a lot Right. Like, really a lot like tilt on his teammates like you know like tilting on himself like all this bad things you know like and it really showed on him when he tilted like very emotional guy uh which i think he has worked on a lot and i, I don't see it in him anymore when i would look at his games but i don't play with him so i don't know right uh but in nip like he, he was good for a while but there was just like there was just so much chaos in nip like like we i i came in uh my first season i don't i joined in like may or something so like yeah. Uh, yeah and then it was during covid right uh and then, like, we had so one or two tournaments before the summer break or whatever. And then, like, oh, in the in the in the fall, like, we we had a very bad season. I remember, 
like we finished super quick like we lost to like this the, the cloud nine colossus in the showdown right uh, like in the quarterfinal in the showdown and we like had like almost a two month break winter break because we were out of all the tournaments and then we came back for the next year uh, we have a meeting before the season starts and Jonas tells us like okay uh, the results were not very good last season understandable uh, so you have until april to give us some results or we'll make changes super fair like i think that's very good that they tell us like okay we have to perform if you want to stay if if not you're, you're gone that's and, and it took a few months you got time to get yeah. results potentially if you're good exactly yeah, yeah I, i'm like okay that's very good nice and then uh, we play one tournament and then we get the message uh twist is benched <laughs> okay i'm like oh okay who are we getting oh no we're getting a <clears throat> we're getting a young ninja oh okay nice so we got the young ninja ctr <clears throat> it was going a bit up and down uh like there was that weird thing this is where already hampers i have to ask you something which is that was where the whole igl thing yeah it also came along because then we heard that story like on a couple of maps he igls and obviously i think he's ibl now of metasport and he like yeah he actually seems like he does that role so was that part of the issue as well they couldn't decide who did what role what was going on there (laughs) i think for me it was more like like he was the igl in like he's igl right like he's an yeah he's just the igl and when he came to us like uh, we changed it on overpass and nuke overpass and nuke we changed it because the rules didn't make sense like we needed a b player on overpass and he couldn't really do it so i had to do it and i wanted to do it as well like not be the ideal because like that's a position when i play with existence like it was one of my best so i really wanted to do it uh so it was more like my like making everything work so i stepped down from that yelling a little bit i would say but i was still like you know calling some rounds during those maps and you know things like this okay uh but yeah for, for the knock point like i think it was so much chaos uh, in nip like there was no stability and he was at a bad period in his life i think like i think now he's like he looks much more healthier you know he looks sure. much better like i, I think he's really you no know, taking care of himself and you know like understand how serious this is kind of you know like maybe you only get two chances right and he he got benched in nip but it was not really his fault we got the vice so but still so i think with knock and nip it was just a lot of chaos not not very good stability like you know thinking about a lot of things than the game so he just didn't play as well as he could Right. One of the moves that obviously has been the biggest blockbusters was the device move. Like, if yeah. someone tells you, that almost sounds like a practical joke, doesn't it? It's like April Fools or something. Device is joining. Like, what? <laughs> like, how does, yeah, that, actually, how does that story even happen? Come on. Yeah, actually, that was so weird because, like, I, I, I don't know exactly when this was, but, like, we, we had, like, one week off or whatever, like, five days off, something like this. And then we were supposed to start or have the meeting. Like a, a meeting to start. I don't know why we were supposed to have a meeting, but we were supposed to have a meeting. And then they pushed the meeting one day. Then they pushed the meeting two days, and like no one said anything. And then like we finally, so the third the third time for the meeting, like it was at 15, I remember. And then me, Plopsky, and Naka just joining team speak at like one, two, just chilling, you know, like we have we haven't practiced in one week, like we have nothing to do, we're bored, so we're just chilling in team speak. And then like before 30 minutes before the meeting, like Naka is like, oh, Jonas is calling me. And then uh, he came back five minutes, five minutes later. He's like, oh, I'm benched. You're playing with the device. device. See you later. And then he left TeamSpeak. <laughs> I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Is he serious? True, true. And then like we had the meeting and he's like, yeah, we're, we've are we signed device. I was like, what? Like, w- why why would he even want to join here? Like, it was so crazy when, when they said it. And I, like, I didn't believe it at first. Like, we signed device and we still had academy players. Like, it was... Yeah, exactly. It, it was It was weird. Very weird. By the way, you know the famous thing? No one's ever asked this. I'm amazed. Like, obviously, one of the little mini dramas was when he joined and they did that vlog, like, the yeah. nicest first day. And the joke is, like, he said about 10 things in that vlog that, like, made everyone, yeah. like, of course, like, the stars get mad, the fans get mad. Like, it was only one day and there was only drama. Yeah. Like, right, when he said all that stuff, right, what was the actual, like, context of that? Like, when he was actually talking, was he sort of giving you a speech to, like, rouse you or make you believe, like, we're going to be champions? What was kind of the vibe of it? Like, I, I remember, like, it was the first meeting we had with him, and, like, I have only, like, I just met him, like, 10 minutes ago. Sure. So, I th- like, I, I think what he meant with that is just, like, like, the way NIP works, kind of, you know, like, with the office, you know, and all those people there, and, like, the way we, 
set up our days, whatever. Like, I just think, like, just that, like, I guess, ad- administrative, I mean, oh, ad- right. whatever the word is, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that, that word, like, that, we're so a few steps ahead in the right. I don't know. But it didn't mean in-game stuff. Like, right. for, of course not. Like, right. that, 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 that's everyone should know. Well, the joke is, I believe, no joke, even Zonic said when he saw that statement, he was like, that little shit. Like, because he, because <laughs> yeah. everyone thought they meant, like, tactically or something stupid, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, yeah true. Yeah, true. we have we had we hadn't even t- like gotten to the tactical part with device <laughs> sure, yet when he said it. Sure. So it was not about in game stuff, I can tell you. By the way, what is the vibe? Obviously, you're not in an IP now, so you can answer this. What what is the vibe when that happens? Because I remember the problem with that lineup. I actually think, by the way, the real reason people went so crazy when device had the year off is because they yeah. felt like they never saw a real nip lineup. We were always blue balls because it was always yes. ZTR or LNG. So it's yeah. uh, so, well, LN. What was his, what was the name of the other uh, player? LNC, LNC. LNC. They go and the problem yeah. with those two players, like you say, is they are young ninjas players. Like they actually aren't like they're not device level put it that way so it always yeah. felt like the lineup was never properly con- everyone was waiting for that fifth spot to get filled was there not a vibe like that in the team were you not sort of like yeah, can we yeah. just sign a player like what are we doing why are we swapping yeah, no, you know? we, uh, we hated it we hated it like uh, I think I think NIP could have made made it so much better like I have no idea what happened exactly because with Jonas and me like I, 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 I didn't have any input on anything right sure. I was just the game leader and the soldier uh, but like, I, it was so weird. It was so weird. Like, it was just so weird. Like, yeah, he's coming next tournament. Ah, oh, he's coming next tournament. Ah, oh, he's coming next tournament. Ah, oh, he's coming next tournament. <laughs> it was just that. It was like, it was so weird. And we were like, we, we need to move on. Like, this we can't play like this. Like, we're playing with a young ninja now. Like, we signed Brolan and now we're playing with another young ninja, like a young ninja upper. Like, what's going on? Like, at least... Like get back, let's let's get back, knock back, and fucking yeah. stop playing. Like, was there never a point they just told you, look, he's just not coming back? Like, you just didn't, no. you just had to wait until he joined his trials, basically. Yeah, the the point where he said he's not coming back was, I think, when we went international, maybe a oh, bit before right. that, maybe right. before, a bit before that, but I don't think so. It was like, like we everyone thought the wife was gonna come back, and then. Yeah, I have no idea what happened, but like I, I have heard, but I don't want to say any names again. But I have heard like the device is very unhappy with a person that worked for NIP during okay. the time. Okay. Not working there anymore. So you can do the math. <laughs> and that was the reason he didn't come back. Fair to NIP. Wasn't really, the, <laughs> wasn't really the hardest. One guy. Wasn't the craziest fucking cryptic clue of all time. You can figure that one out, guys. Yeah. Well, and fair enough. That is the Swedish way to say it, I guess. Right? Yeah. What yeah. about this then? No um, names. What about the, another question I would have goes like this. So when he actually was in the team, even though you had that weird thing with the fifth spot where no one knew what was going on, like yeah. there was a point where NIP got pretty good. Like around that major when we first came back to LAN, NIP yeah. was a top team. Like actually, everyone remembers, dude, weren't you actually ranked number one and number two before the major? So they were like yeah, really we, high we up, were right? Yeah, we ranked number two. Oh, there you go. Two. Yeah, because you like won in the final of the fucking RMR. I think you won yeah, the RMR, won, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, we won the RMR and then we got ranked two before the major, yeah. Did you actually think this lineup, like, it, essentially, look, we don't blame Device. If people know the reasons why, I don't blame him for taking the time off. He has his own yeah, issues no, to deal with. No. But it, it, this lineup could have done so much more, right? I mean, yeah. he only played a couple of lads. Like, like for, for me, like, because uh, I told Jonas to get Borland when we had Device. Just fucking sign in, we will be top three in the world for oh, sure. Oh, so you really would have had them all at the same time because that was the problem. Yeah. Borland joined, but he never joined. The device had already left, right? Yeah, yeah. or he's in bench yeah. rather. Like, I, I just kept benched. telling him, like, sign Borland. Like, right. If you do this, like, we will win tournament. That would be sick, yeah. Like, we will win tournament if you sign him. But he didn't believe in me, of course. Uh, and then, yeah, we played the major and we lose the quarterfinals. It was a very bad game. Like, we played against G2 and. Uh, we lost 2 0. We got smashed both maps. Well, not smashed, but like, you know, 16 8, 16 10, or something like this. I don't remember exactly. And it, it, it was just an awful game from us. Like, we're playing at home and we're playing with a young ninja. Like, it was, it, it's like the most important game in NIP's history. And we're kind of playing, you know, f- almost 4v5. Like, not 4v5, of course. Like, still playing 5v5, but. Like, if you compare player to player, you know, it felt like they had one more player on the server, especially with Nico playing sure. in his oh, prime. I was insane at that tournament, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it was like, yeah, let's just lose and go home, I guess. By so, the yeah, way, that oh, go on. Yeah, yeah going. That, that, that sucked. And then after the event, because like we, we had said like during a long time, like I, I don't know exactly what the other players said, but I had said like, I don't want a young ninja anymore. Can we please sign a real player, like an experienced player who, you know, had played 100 maps in Tier 2, so he knows how to play his positions, you know? That, that, that's enough for me. Uh, and like... They, they, I said this for so long time. Like I remember, like Cologne was the first event back, right? And after Cologne, like I told them, like 
we, I told Jonas like we need to change LNC like he's we won't win tournaments with him like no offense like he's just too young this is too no, he was very, you could tell he's very inexperienced he made a lot of mistakes yeah, didn't see it. yeah. like he, he's just too young like it's like yes. it, it was the same like you just need to be realistic right like it, he's not a new bit or monocy like yes. you, you see that and I, I told him like he he's too bad <laughs> Jonas just laughed at my face <laughs> in my face when I said that like I don't know anything about the game and I was like, okay, sure. But then after after the major in Stockholm, so um, Jonas goes, uh, goes like he writes the message, he has the solo meetings with all the players. And uh, he said like, yeah, I already told the board, like I know you players want to change now, so we're gonna get a new player instead of LNC. And then it's like, so we have the one-on-one meeting, we're walking outside the globe in Stockholm. And it was, it, like, it was the day of the semifinals, I think. Um, and I, I just tell him, yeah, like sign Brolan. Like, I can make Brolan into a ROPS if you want. Like, Brolan can be a lurker. Brolan, like, I can make Brolan into whatever we need him to be. But you st- sign Brolan, please. This is when we still had the vice. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I already signed as a tag. Oh, okay. Nice. Good talk. Fucking hell. And then as a tag came into the team, we had the first practice day, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? I didn't understand the word he said. Oh, like, right. Like, this exactly is exactly really thick, right. Yeah, I was like, this is crazy. And then, of course, it got better with time, but it was like, it was so bad because, like... Because what's the premise? Was... He was speaking Swedish initially or something? No, I never speak. Like, he just used... just his English accent you couldn't understand? No, no, but he, he's, yeah, he, he's, he's tried to speak Swedish, right? Oh, right, I see. Swedish. But he's doing it with a Danish accent is the problem. Yeah, but, right. but he didn't know Swedish. Like, it was like me, oh, trying, right. to learn, me trying to learn French. Like, yes. Uh, of course, I can do it, but it will take time. Sure. Right? Uh, and then, Fuck like there, 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 there was like months going on, and like we lost games because he didn't understand what they called. Oh, like right. we literally lost games because of this. And like the first event we had him was the the blast. Um, it was the one we finished last place. I think we played at least in the Royal Arena. It was when you could play in the Royal Arena even though you only lost. All oh, right, yes. So that was nice. We lost to Liquid, I think, when they also were a dead team. Uh, and. What happened exactly? So yeah, we went to this and we were in the practice room and like me, uh, the whole team, Jonas and then Eric Vendel, who's there now, uh, who is the boss now in NIP, like we're all in the room and like they're saying, yeah, like NIP is going to get like Swedish lessons to, to as a tag, you know, so it goes faster and all this. And then, you know, we had a, we had a long winter break and all this, you know, so he would have time to, to learn Swedish or be, become better at Swedish. I was like, okay, that sounds good. That's fair. And then like in the, the, the first Dusseldorf Pro League, I don't know exactly when it was. But I guess it was around like March or May or something. Something like that, yeah. 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 And then like I'm, I'm having a cigarette, you know, and then Esetag is with me. And then I'm like, bro, how is your lessons going? It's been like three, four months. No, I, I haven't started yet. <laughs> I was like, nice. <laughs> we have been losing for four, losing games for four months because you don't understand what they call sometimes. And you haven't even started. Like, is it your fault? Is it an IP fault? I don't know. I am just here trying to win, but this guy doesn't understand me when I'm talking. It's like, I just felt, you know, I felt like my hands were so tied in this team. By the way, because obviously we can skip around a bit, I do actually want to ask yeah. one more question about the, uh, the old Nip though, because yeah. obviously Plopsky didn't get to stay forever. He had his time when he was there and then he was booted out. Right, this is a player where I want to ask campus because I get a weird vibe on this player. I haven't asked someone privately, but this is the vibe I get. Whenever yeah. I when I first saw him when he came in the Forest Get Right team and I asked around the scene, people told me like, oh, they aren't just signing him to be like, you know, the fifth player. Like he's going to be like when Get Right and Forest leave, people yeah. like him are going to become the stars of an IP. Like, they're going to be like the best players. But that's I noticed in your teams, it always felt like he was almost sort of like a supportive element or something, or he was just doing like the shitter roles or something. Is he a guy that just doesn't demand resources? What, what, what's your take on Plopsky? What's the situation? Um, f- first of all, I think NIP took him too early. Like, I think it was too early for him. Um, and like, I don't know, I just think like six months more for Plopsky in uh, Tire 2, and then he, he would be so good Tire 1. But he, I think he needed some more time. Uh, but also when he joined NIP, he was pretty good, right? Because uh, I remember when I joined NIP and we had the, I had a meeting with Threat, he was like, Plopsky is the best player in the team. We like we need to give him the resources, whatever, whatever. I was like, yeah, sure. And then in the beginning, like Plopsky had all the positions he wanted. He had the roles he wanted, but he didn't deliver when I joined. Right. So we had to change. And I think like the moment I joined is the moment Plopsky started playing worse. And I have no idea what, what it is about because me and him are very close friends. Oh, like, right. We, we, okay. we knew each other from before <clears throat> NIP. Like, uh, sure. Like we've been close friends for for many years, right? So, yeah, it it, it was just weird. And then now when he when he got booted, like 
he he was in a very like bad period of of his life. Like his parents were getting a divorce, and he's very close to them, and you know things like this and other uh, different things. You know, so he was just not really fully focused on CS, and then he got removed. Which I think I don't know what I think about it, to be honest. I don't know if it's good or bad. I don't know. I I think it was good for Plopsky to get removed, so he you know could could you know start feeling happy again. You know, not having to play CS every day and you know get told do this, do this, do this, do this. Just being to control his own days a bit and you know get back into himself. Uh, but I think he could have stayed on the team in that moment. By the way, during this time period when no one knew, like, is the vice ever coming back? Obviously, you had to use the stand-ins, right? And, mate, if people... I tell you what, whereas I said on the old lineups before, you can sometimes go back and they look better in the past. Mate, this lineup looks ass now. Because the the problem is, that lineup you had where you actually came top four at that Pro League, which now look impossible with this lineup, bro, was yeah. where you had Rez, Plopsky, <coughs> you, Esetag, and Fawzi. Like, wh- how does that lineup ever come top four on a lad? That's impossible, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Bro. Like, it sounds like a mess, mate. Yeah, like if you just read that lineup today, it's, it know. sounds like how do they even call it? Exactly, it's wild. And we, we got top four, and we like we were kind of consistent as well. I, 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 but I think I think that they're like we had Res who really stepped up during that time. Like he was gonna be a top twenty player that year, but unfortunately we changed him to the upper, so he didn't get the top twenty. His, it would be his first one, I think. Right. And he would one hundred percent get it if he would just keep keep playing his role in rifling. Like he was so good up until the point he changed to up. Uh, so I think Res just carried us, to be honest. Like me, I think Res. Like of course we everyone played good, had the good games, but I think just overall like the cons- the level we had was because of Res. Like was, 100%. It, was it the case that, because I mean, people all know now, obviously, like, especially if you're going to go from entry fag to like fucking up, is it does he just do any role he's asked to do? Is he that sort of a person? Yeah, yeah, he's that sort of a person. So, like, if you say jump, he will jump, you know? Right. He, he's not, he will never say against you. Like, if he will, he will do what you want, when you want it, how you want it. Sure. Right. What about. Um, you individually in the year when it was the we came back to LAN in 2021 when you were, you were the yeah. IGL and Device was in the team. So the other thing is, aside from Device, which he was playing pretty well, what did you think of that? By the way, what did you think of Device that short playing in IP? Uh, I think when we had Device, like it was so nice to have Device. Like <laughs> I, I am kind of like sad I got to play with him for that short period because like I expect so much from my upper now, you know. Right. I, I I think like he he really showed me like the standard, you know, like what to expect from your teammates, like really, you know, showing them that you expect this from them, you know, like if they are bad on B Inferno, like he would point it out and like try to help them, like you know, like I expect, like you can't do this, like let's say I remember this happened, like uh, we're CT on Inferno, they do a B execute, and we have one CT playing on site and one CT going behind the smoke, right? So it's just one alone, one alone, like you know these things. Like I, I he's like I expect, I expect, I expect from you to never do this again. Like I can't see these things. Like you play to get either both behind the smoke or both in front of the smoke, like things like this, you know. And he really showed me like how to be, like how how to you know set the ex- example, like how to what to expect from others in a way. And it was so nice. And also to having him like. If you look at Res's stats when we had device, like I think it was the best Res we've ever seen. Oh right. And also with me, because I felt like if I do this time. No, you were at your best, I think, completely. You were were killing it at the time, yeah. Like because I felt like like I I fully trusted my team back then. And I don't know if I did that with when we didn't have device, you know, I didn't really fully trust my team. Because when we had device, I trusted my team so much that like if I do this push or this timing play and I, I, I die, like device will kill two or three anyways, or rest will kill two or three anyways, like it doesn't matter. But later stages is NIP, like I felt like, okay, if I don't kill two, we lose the round kind of a little bit, you know? Like before the international, of, yeah, sure. when device left. So yeah, it was with device, you know, having that feeling of of safety, I guess you can say. Like if my play doesn't work, he will make up for it. Like, you know, having that makes you play so much better. Because the other thing was, obviously, this was the era where it's weird because, I mean, I did as well, but everyone flamed you as an IGL because famously yeah. Nick just never won any bloody team rounds on LAN, it felt like. But everyone did say individually you were pretty good. Like, that's, that's what was weird as well, though. That's why I think people were confused if you ever wanted to be IGL hampers because yeah. as a player, you're obviously like the Lurk style and it's pretty rare for like a Lurker like that to be the IGL too. So how do you how do you resolve that? Like, obviously, individually you were playing very well. Were, were there some issues in terms of the T-sides? What, what's your take on that whole thing? Like, I, I think that T-side thing, I don't know why, but it got such a big deal when it really wasn't a big deal. Like, our T-side wasn't even the worst. Like, if you look at the same timing and you look at the 
stats, you look at the numbers, like Heroic had worse T-side than us. Right. No one said, not a single person said anything about Heroic T-side. It was only an IP T-side, an IP T-side. So I don't know, in my opinion, it wasn't that bad as everyone was saying. Like, of okay. course, we played some some horrible games. Like, we, we pick overpass, we start T, we get one, two rounds, and it happened a few times. Like, of course, we played some horrible games, but like, overall, it wasn't that bad that everyone said. And then we got DGL and that boosted up our T-side as well, but I think... With DDL, he just boosted the team overall, like with the environment and like making us feel like we're not five soldiers. We were we're like a unit, we're a team, you know. And that just made us play better on the server, like overall, right? Here's the thing, Hampus. I actually do low key love Threat. I actually think he's a really cool guy. I even do like his mind for the game. I think he's quite brilliant in some ways. But I will say two things. One, there's a difference between being an in-game leader and being a coach. Like I do yeah. think in the modern day, a lot of people who, because you know, we would all take like something like that, like the brain IGL, and be like, you'd be an amazing coach. Yeah. But what we're all missing is, yeah, tactically they would be, but maybe the other things they wouldn't be. Like for example, part of being a coach actually is like personal skills and you know, yes. like getting buy-in and knowing who to. Who you can sort of like pat on the back and who you have to yeah. sort of kick up the ass as it were and I have to exactly. say that's the one area I actually wonder what was what was threat like because I don't really see him as a very conf- t- confrontational person mate. like what was he like as a coach I, I think he was he was not bad of course not like he was very good with the tactical things like he just lacked you know the, the personality like the like, like the, yeah, like the, the how to say, like the family vibe, or however you say it. Like, 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 let's say for example, like Sir Alex Ferguson, right? Sure. Like all, all his players says, like I was ready to go out and die for on the pitch yes. for him. Like with with threat, it wasn't like he didn't even try us to go out and die for him. He used right. to 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 do his tactics, right. you know. So it was kind of more like that. Right, a bit cold. Yeah. Right, fair enough. What about um? So obviously, as you say, it took a million years, but they eventually did get fucking Brawlan. He did finally yeah. join. But the problem is, people think because of now he's in mouse and he's really good, people think like an IP was told in him back somehow. Right. I will say from interviewing Config, he said something I found very interesting, mate, yeah. which is he told me two things, and these were both one of them shocked me, the other one I knew. So the one I knew was yeah. I actually did know from asking around that Brawlan, even though his game is like a top 20 player. He's, yeah. he's a bit more quiet as a personality. Like, he isn't the guy who's going to be like, hey, give me all these things. That He's not like, it's simple or something, you know? It's like yeah. more like if, if he's in a circle of people and there's bigger names and bigger voices, maybe he'll just get pushed to the side. He'll just do whatever's necessary. So that makes some sense as to why his performance might not be as good. But the other one that was crazy was, I asked Config, how did they resolve the role balance? Like, surely people like you, Rez, and Brolan sort of would play similar positions. And dude, he told me the craziest shit of all time. He told me that in IP, it was sort of like, we'll take turns. It's like, on this map, you get like your spot. Yeah. On this the is, this the, is this it, the case? It sounds like mental. This. Come on, give me a, like, it, give me a it take. Was, it wasn't like that. Like <laughs> okay. I remember he said that as well. Like when we had things, and I, I was like, "Bro, like what are you talking about? Okay. Like this is not the case. Like it's on one map. What do you mean taking turns? You play the same role on six maps, and then on the one you have another one. Like it, it was literally six. Like it was okay. just one map we, we we took turns. So it's like, like I wouldn't say we took turns then, right? But for it sounds exaggerated, then sure. Yeah, but like when I came back to NIP now, like it was so so different from when I left, and also from the Swedish lineup. Like I couldn't really do anything. I felt like I, I had no voice. Like I, I'm the ideal of the team, but I can't really decide how we're gonna play the game, and I can't decide how our days are gonna look. I can't decide anything. Like I am just a soldier, and I will be the IGL when we have the games. Like that's how it felt like. Uh, it was just so weird. And then like I couldn't play any of my positions or my roles. And like I had to be the one to sacrifice on a lot of a lot of maps, and it's just like you know, I came back from not playing CS for I don't know exactly how long, ten months or whatever. I don't know exactly how long it was. Uh, and like you know, like it, it was just so weird. Like I felt like I never really got a chance now when I came back, um, which is fine. Like I don't care. Uh, I, I'm I like that team was like like the, the, it was so funny. Like I I got benched right, and then Brolin like Brolin wrote right, wrote to me like, "How are you feeling? I guess you're happy, yeah." I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh my, that's a bad sign. Okay. What about Brawl on the player then, then? Give me some thoughts on him. Yeah, sorry. About... I'll finish the story, but then tell me what you think of Brawl as well. Yeah. Yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, it was a bit config. It was basically just like what he said. It was basically like he was like, so like this. So the pack was me, Hedrick, and Brawl And then on one map, it was config in the pack instead of Brawl and and for me, I, I don't know what when he said like we took turns and things like this. Like it was only one map, so for me that was just super weird. And yeah, I don't know. Like yeah, as I said now when I came back, like there was 
there was too many voices. Like the coach wanted to do this, the performance coach wanted to do this, the org wanted to do this, this player wanted to do that, this player wanted to do that. It was just like it was a shit show. I can say when I came back, and I think I also made a mistake when I left, or not not left, but when I went on this uh, break, because I pushed them. I pushed like the the, the because. Me, Alexi, and DJL, we had a beer uh, in Denmark when before I went home, and like we we spoke about you know what what players can we get instead of or could they get instead of me, and like because the the, the idea was to sign someone right and which did with config like they were not just gonna get a standing because I said like I have no idea I could be gone for two months I could be gone for two years I have no idea like we'll see, and then I it it was the names we were talking about was config and nerds. That would have been and, insane. Uh, yeah, and uh, role wise, like I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was thinking because, like I said, like role wise, like we can make Brolan into like a Staven kind of a little bit, which I think he could play, and he plays kind of like that now in Mouse. But I don't know why it didn't work in NIP. But yeah, I, I can say like the worst, the worst roster, you know, decision I've made in my career, like or been a part of in my career, was you know pushing for Config to replace me because I, I think that was that was really what. Nothing against config or anything, but that was really the, what made it hard with all the roles. Like Brolan, Res, and Config all wanted the same positions, sure. and with nerds it would not be like that. So I have no idea what I've thought. It, it was by far the worst decision I've ever been a part oh, of. Mate, the worst thing about these stories is all the other names that like could be got that they don't yeah, like get. All the insane ones. Yeah, it's all like the Hedgehog TV top twenty players. Yeah, like imagine if they got nerds instead. Like, <laughs> that would be it insane. Might, be, good, might yeah. be a good team today. That you would. Yeah. What about this then? Along these stories, people will notice. In these stories, it sounds like you're just constantly disrespected, dismissed. Except here's the problem. They give you the role that has all the responsibility. IGL, so if, if the team does badly, everyone is going to flame you. Everyone did flame you for the T-sides. Everyone's even yeah. going to think things, Hampus. Like, you wanted these players. You asked for this guy or you told them to kick yeah. this guy. Does it not piss you off that kind of like, you got, you take the, you you get the blame for it, but like you didn't do, you didn't pick some of this shit? Yeah, like, like, for, like, for me, it was like, you know, like of course it's not nice, but it's also a bit on the coach. And like for me, I didn't really care. Like I, I was like I was like after all these things that happened in IP with playing with one young ninja, like kind of you know teaching him the Taiwan CS how to play, and then him getting kicked uh, because Device doesn't want to play with a young ninja anymore. Then they get another young ninja that's uh, worse. Yeah, I'll say yeah. it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have to teach to teach him how to play CS, and then we finally replace him, and we get S tag, and then the device goes away, and then we get a third young ninja on the upper, and then we have to teach him, and you know, like, and all this S tag didn't speak like speak uh, Swedish. Like, I got to the point where I was like, like, I don't care what everyone's saying. Like, I am here, I'm doing my job, I get salary. Like, we probably won't won't win right. anyway. Like, I got into that mindset where like, I am just here doing what I can do, right? And we we it's just a job. Yeah. yeah, we will finish eighth place. Like, I can't really do anything, anyways. Like, I tried right. to, and I tried my all for two years. It didn't work. Like now, I'm just, like, I'm just tilt. To be honest, like that, we never got. Like, I never. I felt like in NLP, like I never got a chance to win. Like same with Russ. I feel so bad for him. Like he never got a team, so he has a chance to win. Like there was always some some problems. Like if there was a stand in, or there was you know the young ninja, or you know S tag who didn't speak Swedish. Like there was, we were never just five players that wanted to be next to each other, you know, having fun while we were playing and you know wanting to win. Like there was always some problems, you know, in some way, which I I guess a lot of teams have, but you know still like I just felt like in an IP I, I felt so deep, like. I felt I was so ready to win, but I couldn't win because of NIP. <laughs> Here's the difference, Hampers. When you say that, you are right. Every team has problems, but they have like one or two. You you had all the problems all at yes. once. So, true. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, without, at the risk of at seven PM, because technically he's still in an yeah. IP, so you 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 decide what you can say. Why does he? Why does Rest stay loyal to them? Why does he? Because the joke that people noticed recently is soon he'll have been there the longest of any player ever in yeah. an IP. That's kind of wild to think about. Like this guy's spent his whole career there, pretty much. Like, he could have gone elsewhere, I'm sure. I mean, by the way, he's a super chill guy as well. I don't think he has any yeah. like toxic. No one thinks he's toxic. Like surely he could be in a different team, right? Yeah, for sure. No, I mean like I, like I think Rest like he's if he wants, he's the best player in Sweden. But I don't, I don't think he wants right now. But like, I, I don't know. Like, I think with him, it's just like he's, like, I don't know how to say this in the best way. But like, he, he, he doesn't really speak his mind a lot. Okay. Like he's more like, like, like in like the in-game stuff. Like it's kind of his personality. Like he's, he's, 
yeah, you wanna go, you wanna go do this? Yeah, let's let's do it. You know, kind of thing. Right. And obviously, NIP is the the they they're his bosses, so what they say, he will do, kind of. You know. So I, I think with Russ, like he's still loyal to them because they have been loyal to him, and I guess he's enjoying it there. But I know, like, he has also felt very bad during some of these periods, like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like both me and him, we were so ready to win and we, we didn't have the chance because of NIP. By the way, another thing that might sound mad, but I've heard this as well, is even though, as you described, the behind the scenes is a nightmare, and even in public, people knew you didn't have the fifth player when Device was there. But I've heard as well that when they said all that shit, when they sort of bragged about signing Device, I've heard behind the scenes, they actually were delusional, bro, and they really thought this team was going to like win a major or something. Like, they thought just having Device... Were, you know that line they said, like, it's yes. like signing Cristiano. I've heard they really thought that was real, and they were just going to like, they yeah. was just going to be at the top. That's why they have these crazy yeah. expectations. Is it true? Yeah, I think it's true. Like, I, I was the one who said this, that it's like signing Cristiano Ronaldo, because, like, I, I compared him and Simple, you know, to, sure. to, uh, to Messi and Ronaldo. Yeah. Like, like, it, like, but, like, uh, Jonas really thought we would win. Like, Jonas really thought LNC was going to be a bit, or a Monesi, or, right. or whatever. Like, he really thought so, and I was like, I, okay, you think so, you're the boss, your decisions, but, like, it should be your responsibility then if it goes bad. But like in all other sports, like if you have bad players, you change players. If you have bad coach, you change the coach. And if then after that, you change the sport director, right? Yes, exactly. No, we, I, I agree. You fire the person who's made all the other decisions you claim are wrong. Eventually, they're surely on. Surely that's their job yeah. as hiring people, and they're doing a bad job doing that, right? Seems yeah, fair to exactly. ask. Yeah, but yeah, in an IP, it was change player, change player, change player, change coach, change player, change player, change player, change player. You know, and yeah, now they change the players and coach, and now also they change the sport director. So. By the way, they're on the, uh, they're on the right path. This will also sound BM, but like I should have to start to claim on my forehead, mate. It's just who I am. Sounds B O I am, right? The way I would ask the question goes like this, right? When I look back now, I will say one of the stupidest things about the era when Calc Jonas Gunderson was the like CEO and ran the team essentially is you've literally like. It's one thing if it had always been an international team, then it might make sense. But the idea that when you're a Swedish team, you're going to bring a Danish player in is mental. Because if people don't know, it's the most famous contract contrast in World Counter-Strike is how Swedes play, which is like a yeah. loose default style and you let people do what they want, versus Danes are like, they're like fucking Germans in football. It's like, right, you will do exactly this at this time and then he will throw the flash. And you're just, It's like the totally opposite worldview yes. even of the game, right? It's kind of wild in that sense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but with device, like it was like with device, he had you know he had lived in Sweden for a few years. That he, oh, like, sure. he knew Swedish. Yes. So he he he, he kind of you know have had you know gotten this Swedish mentality a little bit from living here for two Listen, years. Listen, I could like, blame very... on device, but for the Jonas guy, it feels like he really thought this was like a team you could just build piece by piece. Like I put this piece in here. It's like that's yeah. not Swedish team. In fact, I've always said I never used to get this myself, bro. But I get it now. You know how in Swedish teams, like the famous example is when Makaleli was in Nip, and then they yeah. kicked him. But everyone was like, "What the hell? He was good. Like they were winning." I don't know why they kicked him, bro. Because in Swedish teams, it really is about like the vibe. People are they're not like they're not like fucking teams where like Simple and Zeus were like screaming at each other. Like people aren't going to do that in a Swedish team if they don't like oh. it going to suffer through it and it'll just make the team bad so you do actually need like people who are cool that you want to play with right it's a big deal yeah. it feels like culturally right yeah yeah for sure like that's also the thing where like where why i had so much like it i don't know what word to use like troubles with Jonas. like like i couldn't you know give him my input and he didn't want my input really like it was because like i was kind of un-swedish you know like when i said like when something was bad like i said it like like for example like during the covid era right we're playing online we're sponsored by Razer, so we had to use the Razer gear, like the headsets on the stream, and the sounds. In it's famous headsets, that they're a bit dodgy, mate. I've heard over the yeah, years. Yeah, the sounds. The sounds. The sounds in these headsets are. Let's just say it's not the best sound you can sure. have. Sure. Um, even though you have this uh, sound card thing, you know, like uh, it's still the headset, like it's not good. And we're playing only online CS because it's COVID, and we're playing, you know, very important games, even though it's online. And I tell them like we. Can, can we please try to get a fix for this? Like, because, like, for an example like this, so we're playing Dust 2 CT side. Device is going to peak B on CT side, and he tells me, like, if the upper shoots, uh, tell, tell me, you know, like in T spawn. Yeah, yeah. And then Device goes B, and he's like, the upper didn't shoot, right? And I was like, bro, he's, he shot three times. <laughs> but on any normal headset, you hear the, the upper. Holy bullet, shit, right? right. But, but because we had Razer, we didn't. Fucking hell, okay. And it was so funny because Mouse Sports were also sponsored by Razer, and I knew they also had a headset, so I took so much advantage <laughs> of that when we played them. And okay. like, I, didn't, I didn't hold okay. shit a lot. He just did best of you, yeah, sure. But it worked. Like, I understood sure. them because they had a bad headset, I mean. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Yeah. What about, um, so, okay, we mentioned it before. Yeah. Right, the oh, problem sorry, with... Sorry. 
Yeah, go on. So, so yeah, so so when I when I told this to Jonas, like uh, like can we get a fix for this? So, like I didn't even say like this is bad. Like I, I can, can we try to find a fix? Like I just this response I got was like no, just be a professional. <laughs> it's like I want to win the games. What do you mean? Be a professional? Like what? Is it professional to try to win the games? By the way, just, the best, I, you know, I can skip to the end of this. How about this? What are your overall thoughts of the Jonas era? Because you were there for most of it. Like, what, what is your general... Like, for example, were there any upsides to what he did? Did he bring anything good? Because so, the problem is I've heard some bad stories too. And obviously people, I know publicly, but it's where he was terrible at PR. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, like, uh, I, like, He's about I half know. the reason people hated Nip, I think, mate. Was he you guys? <laughs> Yeah, like I, I don't know. Like I guess uh, he, it was good by him to sign Device, but Device came to NIP, That's right? True. He wanted to be signed. Yes. So I guess if I were in this position, I would sign Device as well. And as far as I know, he had. For, we all know the reason now, guys. Even though he couldn't sit at the top, he had a very specific reason. He had to be in Sweden, didn't he? Like it, was, it wasn't coming because he thought Nip was going to win the major. He, just, he wanted to be in Sweden in Stockholm, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, he got Device, and that was good. But more than that, like I. Yeah, he got Brolin as well after I told him 400 times. I guess that's always also good. But uh, yeah, <laughs> like he got he got DGL. That was good by him. Like I did, yeah. So that's very nice pick from him to find DGL. But the, but the, the, but the downsides in general would be what? And not listening yeah. to years one, it sounds like as a, a repeated. Yeah, no, but for, me just, you. for me, just the downside with Jonas was like, like when I tried, you know, like I, I just want to win. And like, for example, when I told him, like, I think NNC is too bad, like it's too young, like it's too early for him. And he just laughs in my face, you know, like things like this, you know, like just like I, I just think it's so disrespectful. And, you know, like I lost so much respect for him. And also like just this, like th- this is something like that tells you what kind of human being he is. Because like when we were in Rio, the, the major, uh, we went 0-3. It, this was with the international lineup. Uh, we went 0-3. Uh, and then he came the day we lost, because he was going to be there for the playoffs, right? But he came the day we lost, so we were out. So we 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 used to have like five, six, eight days in Rio or whatever to chill. So we're playing some uh, poker, just us, like the team and you know everyone in NIP around NIP. And like also before we started the games, like me and DGL, we said like if Philip, like our manager, like if it's only me, DGL and him left, like we we will let him win because we have heard like he. He didn't get a lot of salary or something. Oh, right. Like, so to be like cool was, to him. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So we were like, <sighs> because we get kind of... Yeah, like, that's a cool idea. Him, yeah. yeah like, like compared to him, we get so much more, right? Yeah. And, and, you, and you don't want to just go to the guy, okay, I don't heard you want me to just give them money. It's like a cool way to like, you let him yeah. win and he feels like he won the yeah. money. Yeah, that's, that's a cool story. So, yeah. so, so that was our plan. Like, uh, so if if Philip is still there, like we will let him win, you know, like it, it, 50 euros to us is actually nothing, sure. but to him it's, it, it's something. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, and then we played poker and we had this like buy-ins for 50 euros. Uh, and then I won and Philip got like third place, so he lost before. Like I tried to let him win. I went all in and I had like K3 and then I won somehow. Uh, <laughs> okay. So it was unfortunate for him. But I won the whole the whole thing. Uh, and everyone paid me the money except Jonas. And then when I asked him for the money, he was la- la- like, I wrote to him about it once and he didn't respond. And then now when I was like on the sick leave or whatever, uh, they I, I, they had some media day on the office and I saw Jonas was there like on the stories or whatever. And then I wrote to Philip like, can you go and ask him about my money? Like, I'm serious. Like, it, right should be right. Like, it's not about the number. Like, if it's 100 euros, like, that doesn't matter. Like, it, it's the principle. Yeah, right? yeah. So, and then I like, you ask him about money and then Philip asked Jonas and Jonas' response was just to laugh. <laughs> So this just tells you what kind of sure. human being he is, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like also before, like I don't understand. Like before NIP, he was in North, and North died. I mean, it's pretty famous. It was a badly run org, yeah, North. Yeah, that's why it's kind of wild they picked him up. I still never got it to myself. He Here's the thing. I will say yeah. it. Maybe you know this as well because you obviously met him. I will say the one thing I'll give him credit for is this, mate. He does come off very differently in real life. Like in yeah. person, if he's but in a friendly he, he, setting, he can he can seem like he's a yeah, chill yeah. guy, you know. Like but, he's a very like if you're just hanging around having a beer, he's a very yes. nice guy like that. Yes. You know? Like like uh, it's like he's a very like funny guy in that sure. way, you know. And like he's very good, you know, with the like he's very good talker you know like both like casual and also business like he's i think he's a very good businessman i just don't think he's the right person to to run a cs team but he's a very very good businessman like that's is good that for sure right we, he's, men- he's, yeah. we, we mentioned this guy earlier but i want to ask right the problem with any topic that involves config is this hampus is 
there's config the player who people know can be quite skilled. He can, it's obviously a guy. It's obviously. I mean, if you're on his team, mate, when you die and you watch his crosser, you can see he's got fucking bonkers here, man. He's a really talented player. But everyone knows there's more that baggage that comes with config than just playing the game. So if you have him in your team, he's a spicy guy. He might go and say something in the media that might upset me. It's, it, it, no one knows what he'll do. Is the problem? He's very unpredictable. So what was it actually like to play with him in this team? Because obviously there was ups and downs even with him being in this lineup, right? What was it like? Uh, I enjoyed it actually. I think he's a very nice guy. Like I, I, I had so much fun with him. Like the, 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 this few months I got with him, like it was not a long time, but I had very, like a lot of fun with him. And I think he's a very good player if he's used in the right way. And he couldn't be used in the right way with the lineup we had, in my opinion. Like I even told NIP now, like when I got benched, like you need to give Config all the space, else it's not worth to have him. Like you need to let him play the game he, the way he wants, else it's not worth to have him. And if you let him, he will win your games. Like in theory, uh, as far as I know. He needs that. He'd be like the guy who's seconded after the guy who just rushes in, right? Isn't that sort of his game? Isn't that kind of Conf's yeah, game? Yeah, I guess a little bit, but also like he, like he, he, you sense it, right? Like if I told him like rush here, he would do it, right? Like he, he has the balls to play the game, right? Yes. Uh, and so also like he, he needs to be in these positions, like rotation, rotation positions, so he can take the risks, you know, right. take the timings, like the, these sort of things. But also with him, like. After I got benched, like I wrote him a message, and he he just left me on red. So I guess you learn who who I guess you learn who is your friends and who is only your colleagues when you get benched in teams. And I think he, he was like he only did, my colleague. Do you think you're, do you think you weren't coming back or something? Surely he's gonna have to talk to you eventually. Yeah, like I don't know. Like he just left me on red, and I was like, well, okay. I, I thought we were friends, but I guess not. Kinda, you know. And then I met him, you know, like the Swedish Cup where they lost to. I don't even know who they lost who the to, but was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know if I would go there with my friends, I would win. But yeah, I don't know. And then I met him, and it was chill. Like I said, hello, nothing special, you know. So it's like we're cool in that way. But I, I guess we're not friends because he left me a read when I wrote to him that I'm benched. And I what wrote it? to him like I wrote to him like I was kind of you know salty as well to him like oh, yeah, sure. why did, like like they did they said told this to me but they didn't tell me this like it's so weird blah 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 and I hate being blah blah, blah. and then he just left me a re read and I was like hmm oh okay. I see right so you didn't just message me you were trying to like relate to yeah. him and be like yeah you know yeah, exactly. we're both on right I see yeah what about this then another thing I would feel fucking pissed off if I'm you with the umpers is if I've been in the team all these years and we've had all these lineups that aren't real lineups and we're using the fifth player that's weird and then the guys out my star player and sat out the lineup for a year and I'm waiting to play I'm waiting to play finally I've got some good players and then when I take a break look you can go to the reasons if you want but you had to take a break for real reasons and then essentially look they did eventually let you come back but there's a world where Alexi B might have just taken your job and you might never be in an IP again like they might, they made it sound like this is oh it's yeah, obviously to break anyway and he wasn't didn't want to be IGL anyway like what happened with you in that scenario like either you would have just been a player and Alexi B would be IGL or they were going to replace you outright do you, what, do you have a sense of what the plan was mm. the long term there like the, the, the long term plan there was like it was after the pro league when we removed Plopski and then like Jonas kind of convinced me to one thing not to be the idea again, to try it again, you know, like we go international, we get the Lexi, like, like he really convinced me that it was a good idea. And I, I don't know, I guess I'm weak mentally who, who fell for this idea because obviously it wasn't. If you compare, like if you compare the Swedish team, the international team in IPS had has not even been close yet. And they have been international for over a year now. And sure. they're, still, they're still step behind when we were as a Swedish team. So obviously it was a bad decision, but for the future, who knows, right? Everyone is going international now. But uh, yeah, I was just a player in the beginning and uh, I enjoyed it. Like the first event we played was the RMR. I was the best rated player at that event. We went 3 0. Uh, I, I felt, you know, I felt, I was very high, you know, on the emotions. Like, fuck, I'm, I'm farming, you know. I felt like a little bit. And, you know, I remember, like, after the first game, I go outside and then, like, Hunter walks past me and he's like, bro, you're a star player now. Nice, bro. You know, things like this because I did okay. the target frags first, you know. So I was just going to be a player. And then, uh, yeah, we got hat trick. Yeah, we got Hedtrick instead of Acid Tag uh, after the Rio major, I think it was, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, I guess the plan was just to keep that lineup. And then we, it was the first tournament of the year when I went back home. Uh, I don't really want to go into the reasons. No, it's all good. Maybe maybe some other time. But yeah. Yeah, I went home and like the idea was for me like to be a player in the team. Like they said, like also there, like they said, okay, we will have the meeting after the major. Like they said, like I won't come back earlier than the Paris major. Like... After the major, we'll have the meeting and we'll see how, how the team is looking, how I'm looking, like, and we'll, we'll make the best decision. But after the Paris major, it took, like, I, I wrote to them and, like, hello, let's have the meeting. Hello. And then it was, like, one week went, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, like, two months went. And then 
when the summer break was about to end, okay, yeah, you, you're playing again. Okay. I was like, okay, uh, I guess I'm playing again. Because apparently the... I don't know exactly what happened, but they didn't want Alexi anymore, and I guess I, I, I was fine with that. Like, I didn't really... Because like I say, mate, I get the vibe for real. That last match that they lost to Apex, if they won that and they'd made the playoffs, dude, I think they wouldn't have brought you back. I think they would have just kept the, that lineup. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I think so too. You know, that was but kind I, of the vibe. That, that, but that would probably be better for me as well. Okay. With how it ended now. By the way, what was it actually like to play under Alexi B? It was nice. Like, it, it was nice. I, I just, I don't know, like, we, I didn't have him for a long time, right? So we didn't really get into the, you know, in-depth stuff, you know, like when you... Because we were still on the basics, because he played his style of CS and we played our style of CS, and then we got head trick as well. So you know, we tried to you know get the like get the balance, and we were still on that part kind of you know. And I, I also felt like I also had some problems during the time, with, which I then took time off for. So I was not the best I could be. But playing with him, it was nice. Like I learned a lot from him as well, and I think he made me a better IGL for today. So I'm I'm happy I play with him, and I think he's a very nice guy as well. By the way, one thing I would actually ask now that you're not in NIP anymore is, like, to me, the whole NIP period, especially because at the end, you even had to go out the lineup, and then it was like, then Hedrick comes in, but then he's swapping from being a rifler to an op. It's like, it felt like you never actually just get a normal team. Like, other pros just get, I know it's so crazy, happens. other pros just get four other pros who are all good. And then you go, right, let's start practicing the maps and spots, and then you play the game. And you yeah. never waited, like, how many months till this guy, and then do we get, another? doesn't it feel like you were just, get, you were like chasing your yes. own tail like a dog the yes. whole time, it feels like, you yes. know. Like it was the, this feel exactly this feeling, and you know, like sometimes you see, like you lose a very tight game, or like let's say we lose a tight game against Face, for example, and we get eliminated, and then like I you see heroic play, and I'm like shit, I'm I'm so jealous of Cadian. He has these four good players around him. Like I also want to try this one time, you know, <laughs> see how I see so... if I can win. So you know, like yeah, of course it it, it was that feeling, but now as well, like I I was in NIP, I didn't win. Of course, I played good during some times, but I also played bad. And, you know, I, I had a year off. Like, I didn't even know myself. Like, it was a new game, CS2, coming out. Like, I had no idea how good I was going to be. And, like, I, I didn't want to, you know, take anything for granted. And now I'm here in, like, tier 3, you can say, and I have to earn it again. And I'm, I'm ready to grind, and I'm grinding. And I, I feel I feel as well kind of good, you know. Like, I've been farming this, this, this last few months, and I enjoy it. And I feel I can be so much better as well. I'll also say the weird thing for an outsider, if someone doesn't have any inside info, is because of the timing of how you went out the lineup and then Lexi B got kicked and then you came back, it actually looked from the outside to a lot of people. They just assumed you were Nip's pick and that Nip secretly didn't like Alexi B. And like, like the idea was always to, you know, bring you back or you were going to be the leader. So the idea that like, you only get a few months that you boot, it seems crazy. Like, what? That's it. That's, that, that's the weirdest part of all. Like, you, like yeah. you've been out the game for so long. Like, logically to me, mate, if you've been out the game six, seven months, you're probably going to need at least three, four months just to get back up to your level. Yes. Like, you're not going to walk yes. back tomorrow exactly. and be good. But they want results immediately. Exactly. And also, like, with the when you're coming in as a IGL in, a, like, a new team or a new environment, like, you need to, like, how to say, like, get to know your team. Kinda, yes. You know? Like, of course, I play with Res, but now Res, but the Res I played with, Roland plays that his position or his that role, so it's a new rest with new roles. So I have to you know learn how he thinks about like his positions and all this stuff. And like I have a new player in Hedrick and Config, and I've played with before. I have to understand like how they think about the game, how they play. Like this takes a few months, right, to get get everything into it. And I didn't even get that, so I couldn't even like I didn't even get a chance now my last time in NFP. But as I said, like I don't care about that. Like I'm happy where I am now. Uh, but yeah, it. it it, it was weird. Like, but the thing is as well, like that was Jonas bringing me back. Um, and then he, I don't know. I, I actually don't know if he left by himself or if he got kicked, but he's not there anymore. And now there's a new guy, Eric Wendel. I think a lot of people know him from ESL from before he was the player manager. And he's very good. I like him a lot. He's very good. Uh, and now also they have threat as the GM or whatever. And yeah, threat and Eric benched me. Jonas brought me back and then they benched me. And I mean... Like, I know they made the wrong decision, like, same as Borland said, like, both me and, like, it was so funny as well. Like, I, I was talking with my friends, like, during, after this time, so it was so funny. Like, they benched me, and then t three, on three months after they benched me and Borland, they won two best of trees, and it was against a dead Fnatic online and against Green Vision. And they, then they just read, lost the rest, so he, like, they, they, I think they, they knew they didn't make the best choice. Sure. By the way, when you had this, um, period afterwards is yeah. it the case that like 
I, uh, well, the problem I always think in Counter Strike is this: I actually think that because pro players have to play the game every day, they do have very short term way of thinking. Like even who they think is good and bad is basically like who beat them in a scrim recently, who did they beat an official, or or if someone's good, like yeah. he just destroyed me, you know. Well, it's, they're like really, really recency in that sense, right? So. I would say this, like when Kassad was telling me he might pick you up for the bleed team, I was surprised. I was, yeah, I remember when he was good. He played these years ago. Yeah. But like, were there many options out there? Did you think people kind of forgot about you because of NIP? What was going on? Um, no, we, we tried to make the Swedish lineup. Like we tried in the summer and then we tried in the winter break and it actually got kind of close in the winter break, but the org changed their plans. And then that was basically it for me and I was like I haven't played for so long now I'm on the bench again but I really want to try to play this next major because I miss Paris so I'm just going to take whatever I get and then Kassad wrote to me and it was the first one and I was like yeah I'm going to try to play the major this is where I'm going I don't really care like if it's tier 3 I will grind my way back up like as I said I didn't play like for the almost a whole year it's a new game like maybe I'm bad at the game like I don't know so this is perfect to me because the thing about this team, obviously, is look, thus far, the results haven't come yet. So everyone's going to meme and go, oh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But it's like, actually, I think it's not a bad line of play. I think the interesting thing is I can see why he picked each... I also had the benefit of asking him, but I can see why he picked each of the players. Like, some I yeah. promise, some actually already were a good player. Some used to be a good player, and you're hoping they come back. It's an interesting yeah. mix of players. What would you say? What are your expectations? What What's this team supposed to do? What's your vision of being in this team as the IGL? Um, Like, right now, like all, every, all I have in my head is the long-term goal of getting to Shanghai Major. Everything else I don't really care about. I don't really want to care about. I don't want to think about it. It's like everything that happens, like all if you have bad results or whatever, like I don't care. Like get into the Shanghai Major is what I want, and that's the goal. And every, nothing else matters really. But also, like the results hasn't come yet. But when we changed Lau for uh, Vladan or brought back Cipher, or whatever happened, like I, yeah, the lineup we have now, like we played twelve best of trees. And we've only lost one, which was the final to Fnatic, which was a game we could have won as well. So I guess we're on the right track at least. Can you give me some thoughts about the other players in the team? Who do you think of each of them? Um, say, say a name and I'll... I'll... Farvin, how about that? The old big player. Farvin. Yeah, no, I think Farvin is good. Like, Farvin is very good. Like, he's the guy who's, you know, he will do anything for the team. If you tell him, play Glock and Nades this full buy round, he will do it. Like, he's, he's that sort of player. Like, when he joined the team, he got one role, and then we changed the players, and he got another role, and then he got a third role, kind of. Like, he has been swapped around a lot, and he hasn't complained anything. Like, he's just, you know, like... Like like you said with German football players, like, do this, do this, you know. Like, right. he's, he's really like that. And he's he's very skilled. Very, very skilled. And I think he, he himself, like, he wants to play... Like... He wants to play a bit too, like... Team CS when he can just go kill them sometimes, you know. Sure. But what about with him? Yeah, like he's yeah. But, but with him, like he's very good. Like he's the guy who never tilts. Like he's he's the guy like anyone would love to have him in his team. And I don't know what happened with him in Big, but him like that that he got removed from Big. If that, but I think he benched himself. Uh, I I think so because I I I don't I can't see Big not wanting him. Like I, for me, he's the best German player. Like he him or Krimbo, like it's tight, but. Yeah, he's he's very good. Right. What about obviously the thing with Cipher is because he was so quickly to the top because of the major, yeah. then everyone had ridiculous expectations. That feels like they just flamed the fuck out of him in TSM. So where is Cipher actually at? Where is this player at? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, like yeah, he was so far fast up, and like I didn't really know about him. And then he was at the major in the semifinals, fucking rushing a ramp on Vertigo in the quarterfinals, he's sending it. Uh, yeah, no, like when when I heard about him for this team, like first I was a bit skeptical. Like, because, like, hmm, he's kind of new. Like, is he really tested or proven or, you know, how you say? But now after I play with him and got to know him, like, I think he's he's a very good player, but he still has a, a lot, a lot of things to learn. Like, his mechanics and his skill is it's, it's up there with the best. But he's still kind of new and inexperienced, right? So I think he's, like, team CS and, like, how to... How he can use his teammates to get more kills or, you know, whatever. Like, he, he needs to work on that and... He has been working on that, and I have seen improvements, which I'm very happy about. So I think he's just on the right track. If he will keep working like this and keeps going, I think he for sure has tier one potential, like by, for sure. 
It's obviously another player that has a big name is Cirque, but the problem is yeah. it's years ago since people remember when he was awesome and he used to be on never on Evil Geniuses. Right, I even knew, this is one thing I'll just say to fans, Kassad isn't an idiot, you guys. The reason he always tells you he bought this team very cheaply is he knows he's gambling on some of these players. He didn't really sign Cirque thinking he's like in 2019 form and he's just going to like drop a 50 bomb. He knows that like this player didn't do well in EG, but the thing is he told me, it's like this is my, one of my gambles basically. It's like a player where like I know the people don't believe in him, but I think he's got like the skills and if we like give him like time and space you know he'll grow that what, what's what's it like to work with this guy it's very nice like except for device like this is the best opera i've had in a team like as a team player like the, the, when i played before like with draken and with knock like they're a bit more selfish you know like they want to be the star they want to win the round but with Cirque, it's more like he, he does whatever the team needs him to do in the moment, you know, like he doesn't care about if he, he is going to die or not, which some operas I played with before did. Like he doesn't care about stats, anything like this, which some of the operas I played before did, you know, so like with, working with Cirque is super good. And now like we have, like both me and Kassad have spoken a lot with Cirque now, like the, the last few weeks and we have like started working with him even more, like because now the team is kind of settled, right? Like we have the basics in, we have the maps, you know, so now we can start working with the players. And yeah, I, I see improvement with Turkey as well a lot. Like the, this last week of practice, like I've been very, very happy with his performance. And I, I hope he can keep this up and show you guys it in the officials as well. Because I think we might have the, the old Turk back soon. Ooh, okay. And then obviously the last lineup member is Vladen, who is the player people might remember. He stood in for Mouse Sport. Oh, sorry, Ents. Sorry, it was Ents, yeah, the, yeah, that CS Asia Championship thing at the end, in early CS2, if you remember. Yeah. And by the way, they were actually still a solid team. So who's this guy? I've heard actually he had a bunch of offers from other teams. Like, I mean, he could have been in some other teams as well, right? Uh, actually, I, to be honest, I don't know like, ah, yeah, about his enough. offers or anything like that. Like, we haven't really spoken about that. Uh, but yeah, with him, Vladan is very nice. Like, he came into the team. Like, he he's like, you know, I want to hold, like, I want to hold B apps. Like, you don't get a lot of players saying that. And he still posts the numbers. So, with him, I'm, I'm very satisfied. Like, you know. Like, of course, he's also a bit unexperienced, you know, in Tier 1 and Tier 2 and all this shit. Like, he's kind of new. Like, he played in I Nation before, I think. So, it's, you know, it's he, he hasn't really played a lot of Team CS either. So, with him, it's just like, he knows how to play his positions and he knows, you know, how to help his team. But he just needs, you know, more time to get more experience, like, how to use his team better, you know, and how to help, like, use himself to help the team more a bit, in a way. I feel like one thing you must be enjoying in Bleed is having Kassad, though, because not only is he your coach, but he basically is sort of the GM. So unlike all those problems you were having in past teams and NIB, yeah. etc., th this is a guy where, first of all, he's a guy who can absolutely want you to talk straight to him and just tell him what you think. Yeah. And then secondly, he's not going to do the thing of like laughing in your face. He actually he understands who, who good players are. You must be enjoying this. I feel yeah, it's a good I love it. vibe I love for it. you. Yeah, it's perfect for me. Like, this is exactly like I, I told my girlfriend earlier. Uh, today like this is exactly like the opposite of NIP like now I can actually have an input you know like he and he wants to hear my opinion like he doesn't just ask for my opinion and then just do the other thing like he wants to hear what I have to say and you know we have a very good balance you know about like the, the in-game stuff as well like how we work and all these things so I'm, I'm very happy with, with how it was working with Kassad. I also think low-key, dude, like, in a way, I don't know if fans get this, but he's actually, in a way, just, like, tanking all the aggro for you guys. Like, they're, yeah. not, really, they're not flaming you because everyone's just going on here with, like, the hooks, the angle 24-7. Yes. So, in a way, yes. it's sort of giving you breathing room while the lineup's going, right? Yeah, it's actually it's actually so different <laughs> from NIP. Like, it's fully opposite, you know. It's, like, a fully 180. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Like, I, I've had, like, this, this, is it three months now? Like, I, I've had so much fun. Like, with the guys, you know, getting to know everyone, and yeah, like, as I said, we won 11 out of our last 12 BO3s, and the pracks are going good, you know, so I, I, I'm happy about where, where we are and where I am, you know, so I'm, I just wanna, wanna play more. By the way, I know already online qualifiers are bad enough, and people obviously at this point in time know that those open qualifiers for the major, I mean, some of them literally have cheaters in, guys. Like, yeah. I'm not even memeing when I say that there's people actually just cheating. And then also, even when they're not cheating, sometimes they're just so random. It's like they don't play normal CS, so sometimes you lose just because it's like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, there's that element too. But the most frustrating one has to be that one where you guys just got fucked over by, like, someone someone not signing up to the qualifier. Like, that had to be a tilt tonight there, right? Yeah, let's not speak about this. Sure. Let's not speak about this. <laughs> uh, all I can say is, in our boot camp room, the, there were objects flying. All right, sure. sure. That's all I, all, all I can sure. comment on this. 
By the way, what about uh, one last thing I would ask about Bleed is just this. Now that you actually have a team where you have input, etc., will we now see what uh, hampers the IGLs like without all the other people deciding? We'll see. Essentially, this is the, this is how what a hampers team looks like. This is how they play. Yeah, I would say so. Like me, me and Alex, or me and Kasad, like we we have a kind of similar way of thinking. So now it's just like getting the like we've gotten to that point where we don't where we have the playbook on all the maps, like we don't have to add new things. Like we have things we can, we just need to, you know, perfect these things. And then, then we have it. We were still not there yet fully, but we're, we're on a good way. So yeah, I, I would say, so this is how a Hampus team sh w will look. But By the also, way, like, oh, go on. Yeah, go on. And then also like, you have to, you have to adapt to what players you have, right? Oh, of course, like, yes. And what, you know, with the roles and everything. So this is not how every Hampus team will look, for example. Right. Okay. This is this is what I have, and I think this is you know the best way we can play with these players we have now. Even though I understand that, first of all, because I'd literally did the role I did, which always like because you're giving your opinion, you're gonna get people who don't like it and they flame me. I get that. Yeah. And obviously, then he has that whole beef with Huxy. So, spoiler: he's, his team isn't as good as G2, so he's never got it in the server beat Huxy's record. So then that allows people to dunk at him. But the weirdest thing to me, the weirdest criticism because I'd easily has hampers is the ones who say he's a fraud and he doesn't even know CS. Like, mate, I can tell you right now, I've met a lot of coaches and even pro players that if I talked to them, I was like, this guy fucking doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, he must just only players position or like this yeah. is one of the guys from way back in the day mate the reason I always raved about him is he's a guy for real where he has like those memories where he like remembers all the rounds of every fucking game as well like oh yeah we're on the third round we should have done it. Like, he, 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 I, to me he's a guy who lives CS mate he clearly yes. loves the fucking game yes like like for like he loves the game like he, he knows so much about it like he has a lot of knowledge like for me like like for in an IP like I didn't have a coach that worked in this way. Like, like of course they worked. Like, I'm not saying that they're not working, but like now, like with Kassad, like it's a, every day. Like, you know, like he's like how to say this, like in the best way. Like, yeah, like he, he, yeah, it's like you say, like he lives CS kinda, you know. And that's I wouldn't say my other coaches did. And you can really tell the difference when someone leaves CS because you know he always brings some new small things, some small detail, some small thing like that. And then you know, like we, when we do the practice, and then he remembers you know the rounds, and you know oh, on this round we did this, but we need to fix this, and you know like these small things that like like of course I worked with them before, like in a way, but like the, the pace as he does it is is something new for me, and it's it's very nice to to be a part of. Since at the beginning of the interview, I did point out that, like, you actually have played a long time now. If people don't know, like, you've yeah. been, like, uh, at least on the fringes of the Tier 1 team for about, like, eight years or so. Mental, it's quite a long period of time. Since you had all these periods where we talk about the setbacks and things that were in your way and all sorts, are you, are you a guy, do you still have the, have you still got the drive? Have you still got, the, like, the fire? Like, I, I want to, like, accomplish something in my career. I want to have some big players. I want to win a yeah, trophy. Yeah. How about that? I want to win a big trophy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I want to win before I stop. Like, I really want to win something. Like, of course, I won this IM fall, but it was on the European teams, right? It's not really... A, I don't count it as a real tournament win, you know? So, no, I, I still have the drive. Like, it's, it's as I said before, like, now I'm here, like, in Tier 3 or Tier 2, but, like, I, I really have, like, the, the mindset that I have to prove myself again, and I'm going to do it, and I, I am just in full, you know, grind mode, just doing everything I can to be better at CS and, you know, one day maybe win something. Oh, one question I didn't ask from earlier, but it's not really that important and connected, so I yeah. can ask it at the end now, is can you give me any t any thoughts on the infamous uh, Anonymous Flashpoint game with the 40% packet? Now, I will say, I'll give you one piece, I'll give you one olive branch here, Hampers, which is it's true. Swedes, it, throughout the entire history of the internet, have always complained about the internet, and essentially, unless it's like nine ping on their server, they're always going to be unhappy, I get that, and everyone wants it perfect, but what happened in this situation, because the problem is that that came off really badly to the public, it just yes. looked like, it just looked like you fucked over a bunch of young Polish yes. and then beloved yes. legend snacks, no, and it, and it was know, just a really bad look, bro, so give me your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, Come I agree, like, I, I even said, like, when, when they were talking about, you know, replaying, and said, like, I said, let's give them the win, like, it's the right thing to do, like, give them the win, but obviously NIP pushed for it to be replayed, and it was replayed, uh, but, yeah, so what happened, basically, was we, we joined the server, and we have literally, we literally have 40% loss, spiking up and down, so, like, it's like, I press 3 to take up my knife, I, I press it 7 times, 
and nothing happens, you know. Ah, right. so, so it's like, oh, we're going B. Can you flash for me? Yeah, I'm just going to stand here, press my flash. So it's not just lag, the packet minute. just isn't even getting through. So it's not in sending yeah, the, exactly. the command to and the like, server. We were rub- yeah, and like we were rubber banding and shit. And like somehow we won the first map. Like I don't know how we won the first map as well. Like I have no idea. Like because we actually were lagging so much. And somehow we won the first map. Uh, and then we lose this other two maps and we were lagging so much and like they couldn't find the reason for it. But because this, so they found out the reason for it why we were lagging, and this is the reason why it got replayed because it was not our bad. So the thing what happened is our internet in the NIP office was too good for the face it firewall. So the firewall thought it was like a DDoS attack because oh, we had right. too good internet. Right. So the firewall sent you know attack back to us. Right. Because we had too much cream or how to say I don't know like I don't know exactly the details. No, it makes sense. Yeah, but, there's a logic to but, it. Yeah. it. But this is what happened. So right. it face it basically. DDoS us when we played the major qualifier. <laughs> and that's why it got replaced, because it was face it's bad, not right. our bad. Because then when we replayed it, they just pressed turn off firewall. Ah, oh, right. Them. That's why it works, right. So it was not our bad. That was th- sure. That's why it got replaced, because if it was our bad, it would never be replaced. Yes. Right? But it was the tournament's fault, so yes. they replayed the game. Right, one thing I wanted to ask was... I notice a lot of people, because now almost every team seemingly has gone international, but even worse, all the Swedish teams have, and everyone knows, Sweden yeah. used to be like the number one country you would say should never go international because I had all the bloody best players. Like, if you go look at history, guys, like the first 15 years of CS is just Sweden on top or top yeah. two or number three, like always elite. So right now there's a whole thing that keeps going on, happens that's driving me crazy. Because on the one hand, right, people look at teams like Eyeballers or Metasport and they're like, hey, like yeah. some of these players are good, like they're up and coming, which they are, but the problem is, like, none of those players, like, tomorrow are going to win the major, right? And at the no. same time, you have people like you or Nork or Isaac, yeah. right, who are on other teams that are good, and listen, those players would be great in this lineup, but the problem I have is this, it can't be halfway if you're going to do that. Like, if I say to Nork, right, mate, leave Apex, a team where, by the way, you could actually, like, go to majors and maybe even, like, make a placing or get top four to land, I can't ask him to go and play in Metasport, because that's unfair to him. It might be of great course. for Metasport, but it'd be unfair to Nork. Like, so, the yeah. problem for me is this hampers i actually this is my question i do think you could make a five-man lineup of sweets that could yeah, be really yeah. good but like i, I say it can't be all half and half it has to be all everyone yeah. has to be, it'd have to be you and doc and, and it'd have to be everyone right like if i asked yes. you to make a, a hypothetical one you could make me a good five-man lineup yes, right if like, everyone leaves the teams yes like i don't think i know like we we could, can make this with this lineup like right now like we like i don't know uh, this, yeah, this is not live, so I guess like this. I don't know if you can cut this out later. Yeah, if you want, I don't know if, it's, if it's fine for Cassandra. No, no, it's all good. This. But uh, okay, so yeah, so uh, basically, so like a few weeks ago, I was very, very close to getting sold to a new organization, and we were gonna have a Swedish lineup, right? Which would be like four players, like four of the Swedish players that would be, you know, like the, that you must have. Uh, and then the last player was, you know, like the A choice or whatever, you know, or whatever you say. But yeah, it was it was very, very, very close to happening. But the org backed off last moment. I don't know. Like they negotiated right. with Bleed for for weeks and then they backed off. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like a hypothetical lineup we could make. Like if I were to make a Swedish lineup right now. Obviously, would... obviously, we mean purely hypothetical. Not being BM, yeah, yeah. no one has to leave their team. Very it's just, hypothetical. Just yes, yes. Yeah, like like if I had unlimited money. And I, I could I could pick and choose like I have I have so yeah unlimited money whatever yes then obviously me and Nock like Nock is the only upper and I am the only IGL so that's the two obvious ones and then like as I said before like I think Res can be the best player in Sweden if he wants so of course we take him and then the thing we always lacked in Nippas is supportive element and now we have Isak who is one of the best in the world at it so it's also the perfect fit so us four here is the perfect ones. And then, as the fifth player, I would take uh, Nilo from uh, Metis. Oh, right. Okay. And I think this team, I, I think this team, two months, top five. Sure. Again, purely hypothetical, though. Yeah, pure pu- pu- the hypothetical. Yeah, of course. Right. At the end of this interview, Hampus, yeah. do you have like a final message for people? Would you like to thank anyone or say hello to anyone? Um, let's go bleed. <laughs> Taxamikit. Yeah. Hear me now. 
Because the thing is, I wouldn't be able to get all the work I do without my brethren, the man Dem in the Skrilluminati, my Patreon community. Because this video, like all of them on my channel, is kindly supported by Frisky, Matt Pugnaccio Racula, Ahmed Haju, Jensen Gore, Tobias Berners-Gorny, Animosity, Toucan, Tosh, and you know it, a special thanks always goes out to Jerky's Minion, who always has my back. Would you like to ask a question in my regular AMAs? Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest I could take in my work? Do you want teasers? Find out who the upcoming guests are going to be. Maybe you want to be part of those lengthy esports discussions I do with my top donators. Well, if so, put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today, where? Via the Patreon link in the description box below.